Front Room Drum Off Series. I'm Rick Kubik, and you're kicking at Kubik's crib right here at this pre recorded show at Brantwood Studios. We're on lot B in Brantwood Studios. Let me remind you that no no one is perfect. So, uh, and we have, we'd like to. <laughs> We'd like to welcome in Ad Adam Kesragis. Very good. Yes. Very good. Thank you, Adam, for coming in. Thank you for having me, Rick. Remarkable I'm drumming. Honored remarkable to be here. drumming. Thank you. Check out Adam right here. Isn't that amazing? It's unbelievable. See how TV works? It's so good. You don't have to do shit. You know? <laughs> it's been done. It's been done. It's been done, did. You know, Adam, I, we've only met, I've only met Adam a couple times. My wife knows your cousin? No, my older sister. Older sister, yeah. older sister. And where are you from, Adam? I am born and raised in beautiful, exotic Whiting Robertsdale, Indiana. I'm so sorry to hear that. I know, it's a great place to be. <laughs> it's Actually, a fantastic place to be. I love Robertsdale. I call it Bubbiesdale. And I, I call it Bobsdale for short. Bobsdale, yeah. <laughs> And Whiting as well, you know, uh, Whiting, the little city with a big bomb behind it. Yeah, <laughs> it's waiting right. to go off. And I, I've said that on air before, and I know Tom Daberton hates me for it, but he could, he could stick it. So <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's just stick. Thanks for coming in. And Robertsdale, actually, me. I have a little connection to Robertsdale and Whiting because uh, in high school, in, in back in the 70s, we had this work program at George Washington High School, Southeast Side Rules. Southeast Side, Side Rules. Rules. And I used to work at Parkview Foods. You, good, good childhood in. Uh, did you live I, in Robertsdale or I, Whiting? I lived in Robertsdale. We, you know, we we were on the on the on the bad side of town. You know, you have Whiting proper, then you have Robertsdale. But I live closer to George Lake. Oh, all right. The, so you the, live on the by the south side of, of Robertsdale, where all the polluted water is yes, and those exactly. weird smells. And I still live there. <laughs> and nothing has happened to me. I'm, I'm still alive and well, and I'm still kicking. So funny you say that because I grew up in Hegwish. Hegwish! And it was very toxic. That whole whiting southeast side, extremely toxic. And I, knock on wood, I have had fairly good health throughout my life. And I played in the slag fields, the tar pits, fell in the water, mm -hmm. Wolf Lake, the creek, all that stuff. Now, did you ever go swimming in that boiling water no, by no. We, we used to go we used to play hockey and ice skate on george lake uh when we were kids uh it was fun and our parents didn't didn't really care because we would walk down to to the end of lake avenue and get into the lake and george lake was so shallow that if we fell through it was as long as you fell in the ice hole yeah, you're, yeah we, we're okay um, don't be an ice hole you know uh i i uh i love the area i'll never leave and yeah you know, I, I always say i don't trust air that i can't see so <laughs> So that's that's why I'm still there in Whiting Robertsdale. So, but you know, it, it's it's a great community to live in, and, and you don't have communities like that anymore. You know, where everybody knows everybody, and everybody you know somehow can find out that you're 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 a sixth cousin, twice removed, separated. You know, it, it's it's a wonderful community to live in. At one point, I, I found this out. They used to have Boardwalk Park there. I don't I don't know if you're familiar. I with I do this. remember that. Yeah. This well, is I, I don't I don't remember, but I've I, I've. Seen, you were born in 1918. I was born in, I was born in 76. <laughs> but I do marvelous. I do. Hear stories of, of Boardwalk Park and the amusement park that they had over there, and the Roby Racetrack. Roby Racetrack, and then a Medora's. Medora's yeah. came actually uh, for the regionites out there. Medora's Dance Land, that dance floor came from that Boardwalk Park. And what they did is they, they moved it across Calumet Avenue and built Maduras when that boardwalk park closed. Because mm -hmm. it was kind of like the Coney Island of, of North Northwest Indiana, Indiana yeah. which was really cool. And there are a few pictures of it. I've seen the There's pictures, actually yeah. some footage on YouTube, some old footage from I probably like the 20s, late 20s or something. So, you know, there's a lot of history in, in, in that area of, of Northwest Indiana, of the Whiting Roberts State. There's a lot of history there. I miss the driving. I really miss 41 driving. Yeah, then it used to be the flea market after that. And uh, then now they, it's all gone. Drums? Why drums for you? What is the deal? I was just I four. was I was about four years old. Four. About four. When you started? Well, well, yeah. I I uh, we had a neighbor across the alley, and um, only one. Well, no, there were several okay. actually, but <laughs> but uh, the na the the family that lived across the alley from us they had they had five kids. And David Saliga was the oldest of the, of the five kids, and he was a drummer. And uh, there was one time he was in high school, and he had brought the uh, he had made a deal or you know whatever with the with the school band director at Clark High School, and 
he was able to bring the drum kit home for a summer and just set it up in their basement and and uh he brought me over here's here's david salia this tall lanky guy with long hair that that everybody just thought was the coolest guy around and here he brings this little four-year-old kid over to to see this drum set and you know at that time it just seemed like the drums just went on for days and from that moment on i was just like wow this is really really cool he put some frank zappa and some rush on the on the old techniques stereo and and techniques, and, yeah. and, and pioneer uh, speakers yeah with pioneer speakers like and, seven feet tall yes, <laughs> yes you know and uh he played along to uh to some songs and i was just kind of like oh my god that's so cool isn't it funny you said that saliga was the cool kid in town yeah he was now what year was this 76 this was oh you were born in like, 76. i was born in 76 so this is like 1980 81 around that time there and, was always uh, a cool kid yeah in the neighborhood well you know he you know he, i happened to be the cool kid in our neighborhood <laughs> after a while first i was a dweeb and then oh come on my wife's giving me weird looks <laughs> Well, David, David was the, was the cool guy that everybody wanted to be in the. Did he have sideburns or something? Oh yeah, and then yeah. he had a big Adam's apple, you know, and then he a bit, and then he uh, he went off he went off to be uh, a big, a big Adam's, Adam's apple. apple, and he and he went off to be a Navy pilot. I mean, how how much cooler is that to be a Navy pilot, you know? And then some people, I you know, it, yeah, I'm gonna learn to fly. I, yeah, I can't I can't barely finagle myself. Around this landing coming down. I, I could barely use the turn signal sometimes <laughs> in my truck, you know. How do you turn the yeah. brights on again? No, he, he was he was like the 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 inspiration for me to become a drummer. And uh, you know, if I if I hadn't had just that that person in my neighborhood to say, Hey, come check changed. this out. Could have changed. Know, I could have wound up playing the accordion. Adam Kesregas, <laughs> welcome in, man. Thank you, Rick. Thanks Thank for having me. A little talk back maybe or sure. Uh, you can just bounce back if you want to start. All you right. You should hair get hair plugs. plugs. No, I don't think so. I used yeah, to bullet have holes. I used to have the ring around my <laughs> around my head and um, the ring. For yeah, well, the the hair. Oh like, yeah, it was, yeah. It was, hanging it was, onto it. Hey, there was nothing here. I was hanging onto this. <laughs> it's kind of like the Costanza. Yes, I was hanging. No on comb to overs. Hanging onto nothing. <laughs> and and so so then you didn't want I, to do I, the comb over. And I did it caught not, in the wind no, and it was I, all I did on not one side. And then finally, my coworkers just said, "Adam, you look old." They said, "You should just start shaving it." And I and I. Yul Brenner. Yeah, just thinks so Brenner. I finally just caved, and, and that was it, and I've been doing that ever since. I can't remember where I was working, and there was one guy who was completely, it was all gone, a little bit of hair back here, but he had this, it looked like a Dairy Queen swirl. <laughs> like a curly, or like, like, or like uh, Charlie Brown with, with, the, with the little curl right there. And every time he'd come, he goes, Rick, can you do, the, can you do this from, and I would just be looking at his hair like, why is he, I, I had that kind of Seinfeld echo. Why does he have Hey, how about drumming? Let's go drum. Let's go. All right, come on.
Like I said, I think we're going to have to finish this pretty soon because uh, <laughs> we're bringing out the brown. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Cheers. And uh, I have to shy away from this. I only drink this at home. I, I have to avoid it in a public situation and being public here. Not bad because this Not is the bad. first. Basil Hayden's. Very good. Hmm. You know, I had an issue with this with this boy uh, back in the 90s. I, I loved beer in bourbon, a uh, bourbon mm. with the beer back. With the beer back. With the beer back. And uh, talk about forgetfulness, especially with my ex wife. I had an ex wife as well. I know you. My ex wife. I want to talk I, about I, that. I'm going to just put, the, I put it out there already. <laughs> <laughs> we, I was living in New York City. Had a had a had a little hiatus from the band about six months. We had some cleanups to do within the band itself, and uh, my marriage was floundering. And um, took the car one time. I don't know why I lived in Manhattan, but I needed to drive somewhere. And the next next day or so, I came home, and the wife's like, "Where where's the car?" I go, "I don't know. I didn't take the car." <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I was in the pound. That's, so <laughs> that's not good. That's good not times. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I've cleaned up since. That's a good thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> Drum cases or no cases? Uh, bags. Yeah, I bags. gotta, I gotta throw them in bags to protect them. My, my kid is, is uh, it'll be 20, 27 years old, twenty six years old. Your child is twenty seven. My kid, my kit, my. Kit. Oh, I thought you said no, your kid. My kid. <laughs> My, my I, drum kit. My drum kit is about. 20. I swear to God, I'm gonna play it back. It sounds like yeah. you said my kid is no, 27. Kid. I go, what's your kid have to do with it? Oh yeah, from a Zerodi. I keep them in the bags, you know. I think part of the reason why people wanted to play with me is because number one, I have a truck. Number two, I I had room to store all the stuff. So I would, you know, it, it, it seems like almost every band that I that I played in, including my current one, I, I stored the PA equipment. I loaded up in the truck, and I don't mind doing it. I just like. Playing, I like having fun. When I was a young kid, we always rehearsed at my house because I really didn't want to move my drum. Well, kit yeah, around. who does? But the thing is, we had a B three organ, and the dad used to have to come downstairs with two luzzies, oh, and that was that's fantastic, killer. My my parents had a rule that that you could play any time after nine o'clock, and bef before eight o'clock. Once eight o'clock rolled around, that was it. Time to time to nine in drums. the morning. Nine in the morning eight. till eight at night, and that was it. Any time in between there, they said. Go at it. So the entire neighborhood knew where I was at any given time because when as soon as I'd get home from school, I'd do my homework, and then I was upstairs in my parents' house banging on the skins. So next time you see Eric Lambert, because we used to rehearse at my house in Hegwish, loud. Ask him about Mr. Matusek. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we would play. And it wasn't all that late. We go to maybe ten, but the thing is, there would be like seventy-five people in the basement watching us rehearse. Beer cans outside, people hanging on the hoods of neighbors' cars, and Mr. Matusik would come <laughs> pounding on the window. Oh God, good times. There was good one times. time in all the years that I played at my parents' house. There was only one time that that we got a complaint from the neighbors. And it was like three in the afternoon on a Saturday, and the neighbor called, and she was she was irate. She was very mad because her husband was trying to take a nap on a Saturday afternoon. And my dad answered the phone, and he basically just told her what to do while he was taking a nap. So that was the only, that was the only call. It was the only call in all those years that we, that we ever got a complaint. No. Honestly, I have to say, Mr. Matusik, I don't think he would have mind, but the, I, I know the wife was there with, with, with mm -hmm. the cattle prod, like, you go get you him, go, get go, him. go tell him, you, shut you, up. You, you're shaking your fist. You go tell that kid. <laughs> Any hazards have you found with drumming? No. Uh, I've hit myself in the head a few times when I'm really getting into it. That's one of the things as a drummer you know getting into it is that you're going to have to load and lug all this equipment. You know, you might as well, if you're not going to do that, you might as well be just a harmonica player. Daryl Hall or John Oates? I'm going to say Daryl Hall. Daryl Hall. Yeah. He's got some soul. I'm going to go with John Oates. With, when... the, with the porn stash that he's got on and the afro. And... He looks good. He's <laughs> aged well. Yeah, he, he lost that, yeah. that mustache. Yeah. So it's say it isn't so, it is, mm -hmm. it is. You want to try one? It isn't so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with John Oates. I, I, I like Holland Oates. I, I do too. I do too. I think they get a, a bad rap, but I, 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 I dig them. I you mean, know, you know what the bad rap is, and a lot of my friends who are musicians, you know, there's always a band, mm -hmm. and I'll admit to this, when when the, when the band was out and you're with your rocker friends. 
and there's like a, a, a schlacky song you like like maybe a love song right. foreigner song or something you know no i don't like that song but in the car you turn it up and oh you're, sure you <laughs> all you all have your guilty pleasures i mean <laughs> You know, you don't don't tell me that that you musicians out there don't jam out to Starship's uh, "We Built This City." Anytime, oh my God, that's probably one that, of the I mean, worst it's, it's songs the ever worst, built. But it's the best worst song ever built. <laughs> Buddy Rich is like everybody's you know favorite drummer. But I want to kill myself because I can't play like him. Well, there's a lot of good players out there, and I I, I know that there's people that can play circles around me. I know that I can play circles around some people. I'm very humble, and I'm very fortunate to you know play with some really great guys but i remember when i was a kid and you know back in the you know early 80s you know they would they would after the after the six o'clock news they would say you know who, who's going to be on the tonight show with johnny karsten and it was you know buddy rich or louis belson would would call buddy rich was always on and, he was on quite and, a bit and i remember being this little kid you know asking my mom saying mom can i please stay up late past my bedtime to watch buddy rich or watch louis belson on the tonight show it to was, this day i watch videos and i'm like how the, same, the heck did they do that the same thing and when i see the those, I'm uh, gonna take those, this off because my head's starting yeah, okay. to sweat. <laughs> your, your hair was fine, by the way. Here, I'll put that in wardrobe. <laughs> hair brought to you by Schmoyles. <laughs> Why, Clavin? <laughs> nice, get, doesn't it get nice sweaty? Nice lady. <laughs> nice lady. Oh, it's all schmutzy. It's all, I got a little schmutz. You know, got a schmutz on the on the ten head. Speaking of drummers, you know there are so many that I like. I mean, uh, I, I look for the musical side of a drummer. I try to be as musical as I can. Uh, I think one of the most musical guys is Papa Joe Jones. Oh, definitely. Uh, I mean, there are a lot. I like Max Roach. Yeah. There's just tons and tons and tons. It's hard to pinpoint one it or is, two. Because everyone has a so different many. style. Yeah. Ginger Baker has a great style. Right. All the- Stuart Copeland. I mean, yeah. you know, you can put him in his own category. Billy you know, Schmierka. Billy, yeah. Billy Schmierka is another one. So you don't know him, do you? No. I don't know. <laughs> He's the musical director here. See, he's sitting right over there. Let's see. Hey, Billy. Billy.
do animal. <laughs> this is Larry did animal. All so right. do you do your animal impression? Uh, <laughs> Oh, what? You're welcome. That was my idea. Yes. <laughs> It's a workout, right? Too old. <laughs> Adam, thank you so much for Rick, coming by. Thank you for having me. Thank this you. is a fantastic bit that you're doing here oh, with all the local drummers. That. You know, we, we are drummers are very unappreciated, I think, and I think that this is uh, a one way to, to to let the public know that we're we're not complete imbeciles, and uh, you know, we, we do we do serve our purpose. Well, listen, if you really look at it, drummers always get all the great looking girls the smart girls. true actually do you have a favorite groupies name i don't have many groupies but i'd have to say my favorite groupie right now her name is becky becky yeah. okay yeah. i was just looking for a name so becky becky's a favorite groupie name mine is hilda 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 yes i remember hilda back from 1968 yes when i was 11 11 <laughs> <laughs> That sounds distorted. Uh, you said perverse, right? Perverse, right. <laughs> Tell us about your band, Underground Profits, with Colin Peterson uh, and Colin Matt Peterson, Valukas. Matt Valukas, Larry Roberts. Uh, we are a four-piece rocking teenage combo, as I like to call us. <sighs> And uh, we do a lot of uh, uh, interesting twists on 80s tunes and 90s tunes and one-hit wonders, and we kind of throw in a modern tune every now and then, you know, a current tune. But uh, uh, come check us out. Look out for Underground Profits. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook uh, or undergroundprofits.com. Come, come, come see us play. A come really good band. Time. Really good band. I've seen them before. And I uh, wish you the best of luck with that. You've been kicking it in Kubik's crib right here in the front room. The Drum Off series. We've got many other people coming by. Don't forget, join me live on radio. WJOB AM 1230 104.7 FM in the front room. Fridays at 2 p.m. Central. Be there. Thank you so much, Adam. Thank you, Rick, for having me. I right, appreciate it. Very good. Excellent drummer. Go see Adam and the Underground Prophets. at a location near you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Thank you. Thank you.